Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we will be covering Daniel 8 through 10 and 3 John. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation and a smooth reading of your word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. Daniel's vision of a ram and a goat. Daniel 8. In the third year of Belisar's reign, I, Daniel, had a vision after the one that I had already appeared to me. In my vision, I saw myself in the citadel of Susa, in the province of Elam. In the vision, I was beside the Yui Canal. I looked up, and there before me was a ram with two horns, standing beside the canal. And the horns were long. One of the horns was longer than the other, but grew up later. I watched the ram as it charged towards the west and the north and the south. No animal could stand against it, and none could rescue from its power. It did as it pleased and became a goat. As I was thinking about this, suddenly a goat with a prominent horn between its eyes came from the west, crossing the whole earth without touching the ground. It came toward the two-horned ram I had seen standing beside the canal and charged at it in great rage. I saw it attack the ram furiously, striking the ram and shattering its two horns. The ram was powerless to stand against it. The goat knocked it to the ground and trampled on it and none could rescue the ram from its power the goat became very great but at the highest of its power the large horn was broken off and in its place four prominent horns grew up towards the four winds of heaven out of one of them came another horn, which started small, but grew in power to the south and to the east and towards the beautiful land. It grew until it reached the host of the heavens, and it threw some of the starry hosts down to the earth and trampled on them. It set itself up to be as great as the commander of the army of the Lord. It took away the daily sacrifices from the Lord, and his sanctuary was thrown down. Because of rebellion, the Lord's people and the daily sacrifice were given over to it. It prospered in everything it did, and truth was thrown to the ground. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to him, How long will it take for the vision to be fulfilled? The vision concerning the daily sacrifice, the rebellion that causes desolation and surrender of the sanctuary and the trampling underfoot of the Lord's people. He said to me, It will take 2,300 evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary will be re reconstructed. The Interpretation of the Vision While I, Daniel, was watching the vision and trying to understand it, there before me stood one who looked like a man. And I heard a man's voice from the Yuli calling, Gabriel, tell this man the meaning of the vision. As he came near the place where I was standing, 
I was terrified and fell prostrate. Son of man, he said to me, understand that this vision concerns the time of the end. While he was speaking to me, I was in a deep sleep with my face to the ground. Then he touched me and raised me to my feet. He said, I am going to tell you what will happen later in the time of wrath, because the vision concerns the appointed time and the end. The two-horned ram will that you saw represents the king of Media and Persia. The shaggy goat is the king of Greece, and the large horn between its eyes is the first king. The four horns that replaced the one that was broken off represent four kingdoms that will emerge from his nation, but will not have the same power. In the latter part of their reign, when rebels have become completely wicked, a fierce-looking king, a master of intrigue, will arise. He will become very strong, but not by his own power. He will cause astounding devastation and will succeed in whatever he does. He will destroy those who are mighty, and the holy people. He will cause deceit to prosper, and he will consider himself superior. When they feel secure, he will destroy many and take his stand against the prince of princes. Yet he will be destroyed, but not by human power. The vision of the evenings and mornings that has been given is, to you is true, but seal up the visions, for it concerns the distant future. I, Daniel, was worn out. I lay exhausted for several days. Then I got up and went about the king's business. I was appalled by the vision. It was just beyond understanding. Daniel's Prayer Daniel 9 In the first year of Darius, son of Exodus, a Mede by descent, who was made ruler over the Babylonian kingdom, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem would last seventy years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him, and keeps his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. We have not listened to you, your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our great kings, our princes, and our ancestors, and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are righteous, but this day we are covered with shame. The people of Judea and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, in all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you, we and our kings, our princes, and our ancestors are covered with shame, Lord, because we have sinned against you. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God or kept the laws he gave us through 
his servants, the prophets, all Israel, and has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore, the curses and swarm judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. You have fulfilled the words spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing on us great disaster. Under the whole heavens, nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come on us. Yet we have not sought the favor of our Lord, our God, by turning from our sins and giving attention to your truth. The Lord did not hesitate to bring the disasters on us, for the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does, and yet we have not obeyed him. Now, Lord our God, who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and who made for yourself a name that endures to this day, we have sinned, we have done wrong, Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts. Turn away your anger and your wrath from Jerusalem, your city, your holy hill, our sins and the inequities of our ancestors have made Jerusalem and your people an object of scorn to all those around us. Now, our God, hear the prayers and petitions of your servant. For your sake, Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, our God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make requests of you because we are righteous, but because of your great mercy. Lord, listen, Lord. For, Lord, forgive. Lord, hear the act. Hear and act for your sake. May God do not delay. Oh, my God, do not delay because your city and your people bear your name. The seventy sevens. While I was speaking and praying, confessing my sins and the sins of my people Israel, and making my request to the Lord my God for his holy hill, while I was still in prayer, Gabriel, the man I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me in swift, swift flight about the time of the evening sacrifice. He instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. As soon as you begin to pray and a word went out, which I have come to tell you, for you are highly in esteemed. Therefore, consider the word and understand the vision. Seventy sevens are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish. Transgression to put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophesy and to anoint the most holy place. Know and understand this. From this time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the ruler, comes, and there will be seven sevens and sixty-two sevens, and it will be rebuilt with streets and a trench, but in times of trouble. After the sixty-two sevens, the anointed one will be put to death and will have
heaven who decreed and he will confirm a covenant with many for ones for one seven in the middle of the seven he will put an end to sacrifice and offerings and at that temple he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Daniel's Vision of a Man Daniel 10 in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Bethlehem. Its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice foods, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. On the twenty-fourth day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up, and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Uperes around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and his voice like the sound of a multitude. I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and they hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at the great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned de deathly pale, and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. I had touched, a hand touched me, and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you, who are highly esteemed, considered carefully the words I am about to speak to you, and stand up, for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted my twenty-one days. Then Michael, one of the chief priests, came to me, help me, because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to you, explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. While he was saying this to me, I bowed with my face toward the ground and was speechless. Then one who looked like a man touched my lips, and I opened my mouth and began to speak. I said to the one standing before me, I am overcome with anguish because of the vision, my Lord, and I feel very weak. Now, how can I, your servant, talk with you, my Lord? My strength is gone, and I can hardly breathe. Again, the one who looked like a man touched me and gave me strength. Do not be afraid, you who are highly esteemed, he said. Peace, be strong, and peace, be strong now, and be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, 
speak my lord since you have given me strength and so he said do you know why i have come to you soon i will return to fight against the prince of persia and when i go the prince of grace will come but first i will tell you what is written in the book of truth no one supports me again and against them except michael your prince okay that was daniel 8 through 10 now we will be turning to 3 david third david third david the elder to my dear friend Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Dear friend, I pay, pray that you may enjoy good health, and that you may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. It gave me great joy when some believers came and testified about your faithfulness to the truth, telling how you continue to walk in it i have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth dear friend you are faithful in what you are doing for the brothers and the sisters even though they are strangers to you they have told the church about your love please send them on their way in a manner that honors god it was for the sake of the name that they went out, receiving no help from the pagans. We ought, therefore, to show hospitality to such people, so that we may work together for the truth. I wrote to the church, but Dotrephius, who loves to be first, will not welcome us, and so when i come i will call attention to what he is doing spreading mal malicious nonsense about us not satisfying with that he even refused to welcome our believers or other believers he also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church dear friend do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. Demetrius is well spoken of by everyone, and even by the truth itself. We also speak well of him, and you know that our testimony is true. I have much to write to you, but I do not want to do so with pen and paper i hope to see you soon and will take face to face peace to you the friends here send their greetings greet the friends there by name and that was third john which concludes the bible with briscoe 2022 for today tomorrow we will be covering daniel 11 through 12 and jude father i just ask for clarity of voice and articulation and a smooth reading of your word so that it may be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world in jesus mighty name amen and they all said amen Thank you, Father, for your word, because hmm, I'd like to thank you folks for tuning into the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. I, Shenandoah Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the word of God, and as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I, so come back and see us tomorrow, because, well, God will and will be here, and we hope that you are, too. God bless you. Come back tomorrow 
and please like and share.